I am super excited to introduce my guest. He is a very, very, very talented young actor. I've had the pleasure of working with him. He's my student, and I am super excited to introduce Duncan Joyner to the Hollywood Dreammaker podcast. Welcome, Duncan. Hey, everyone. It's me, Duncan. Duncan, I got to tell you, man, I am super proud of you. You know, I mean, the work that you've done, uh, you know, every time I see you on a, in a movie or a, on, a, on a TV show and I see the work that you're doing, I am blown away. Thanks. You know, and you've grown so much. I mean, you're not the same little boy that came to see me five years ago at the, at the Manhattan Actor Studio. I mean, you're you're a little man right now and you're doing some amazing work. So I'm really, really proud of you. I just want you to know that. So, you know, I created the podcast to inspire young artists to follow their dreams. You know, if you have a dream to be in this business, then you have to go after it and you have to go after it like you mean it with all your heart mm -hmm. and soul, with your passion you know, go after it with a vengeance. You know, this is a tough business. It's very competitive, but if you want it bad enough and you go after it, you know, you can achieve the dream. I mean, look at me. I, I, you know, I came out to Hollywood when I was 18 with 200 bucks in my pocket, a one-way ticket, didn't know a soul out here, but I knew I wanted to be an actor and I've been blessed. I've been a working actor for, you know, 35 years. And, you know, I wanted to have you on the show because you are a working actor. I mean, you're working and you're living the dream. And I think your journey, your, your, your journey into this business is, is very inspirational for young actors to, you know, hey, if you can do it, why can't I do it, right? So mm -hmm. I just want to start at the beginning, you know, like when did you, you know, when was your first acting job? When did you know you wanted to act? How did that all start out for you? Well, I mean... I'm not 100% sure, but I think my mom, she uh, put me into an audition when I was around three years old, just to, you know, see if I liked it. And uh, I really did. And uh, I'm, I've am i been doing it ever since. Didn't you book that job, that first audition? I did. I actually did. It was a Hallmark commercial. And uh, I was a really young guy, but uh, yeah, I, I actually booked my first audition. And that's, that's what awesome. kind of kept me going. That's awesome. And you know what? You'll always have that footage. Do you have the footage on that? Um, I mean, I don't, I mean, probably it's somewhere on YouTube, but I'm not a hundred percent sure where it is. I mean, that's the cool thing about being an actor. It's like, you know, you, it's a time capsule, you know, you see your performances in some of these films, you know, when you're an old man and your grandson will be able to watch you when you were <laughs> you know, 10 years old. I mean, that's pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. So what would your advice be to actors, young actors that are, you know, looking to pursue a career in acting? Well, I would say just to, you know, do it as much as possible and just see if you like it. I would suggest doing some home theater projects and uh, some home movies and just goof around with your friends and family sometimes. And uh, yeah, it, you really have to love it in this business. So just see if you like it. And if you do, continue yeah you gotta love it because it is a roller coaster ride it is full of rejection and ups yeah. and downs and you know so you gotta really be passionate about it mm -hmm. so that's great advice and you know creating your own projects you know this little device mm -hmm. that everybody has these little phones you know they're like little yeah. movie making machines you can write a script you can film it you can edit it you can even have your own tv show you can have yeah. your Instagram reels or your YouTube channel or, you know, so you're not, you know, you can create whatever you want. Mm -hmm. So start filming yourself. And, you know, mm -hmm. the, the business has changed so much that, you know, now you got to kind of be like a little movie producer. You know, you get these mm -hmm. self tape auditions where you got to film yourself. You got to know how to light yourself. You know, I tell my actors all the time. You know, the cool thing is you have YouTube and you can Google three point lighting. You can Google, how do I edit? How do I frame, you know, you know, so you can really learn from some really talented, you know, directors of photography or editors that are going to give you a tutorial on how to, you know, how to get that cinematic shot, how to, you know, light yourself. So, you know, study, study the craft. That's the most important thing. Yep. You know, and doing theater and getting on stage and getting comfortable and being in front of people, uh, you know, that's that's some great advice. So what is your favorite experience as an actor? Um, I think my favorite experience as an actor has been, you know, 
just working with all the really talented people that I've worked with along the way, like Jody Foster and Jonathan Price and Andrew Stanton, people like that, that have really made my career special. And I feel like it's really cool about acting because it's kind of, a, you know, you're all kind of connected in some way. Yeah, you're it's all like a in big... the business and uh, yeah, you get to meet some really cool people. Yeah, it's a, it's a big business, but it's a small business. You know, you mm -hmm. work with people over and over again. You may work, work with the wardrobe lady again or the makeup lady or, you know, the hair person, you know. So, you know, it's it, it's about having a reputation, a good reputation. And, mm -hmm. you know, people want to work with you. You know, if you yeah. do good work every time you show up, people are going to want to work with you. And, mm -hmm. you know, the flip side is true, too. If you, you If you're not prepared and you're not, you know, you don't know how to act on set as a young actor. If you're bouncing mm -hmm. off the walls, you know, when they say quiet on the set, they're not going to bring you back. You know, they're going to mm -hmm. replace you with another actor that can, you know, be quiet when they say be quiet. So mm -hmm. it's really important to, you know, know what it, what it, you know, that there is set etiquette, mm -hmm. right? So what has been the toughest experience for you as an actor? I think the toughest experience as an actor is, you know, when you really, really want an audition and you don't get it, I mean, it's it's really hard. It is hard, especially when you really, really are passionate about it. I mean, you're going to have your ups and downs about acting. You're going to get some things and a lot of things you're not going to get. But I find that the hardest part is when you don't get something that you really want, it's really hard to, you know, just go on and try and do the next thing that you set out to do. Yeah. It's tough, but you gotta you you gotta move on. You gotta do yeah, your you best really work. Have to move on. Every every chance you get, every audition, it's not about going in there and trying to get the part. Yeah. Okay. It's about going in there and having some fun. Mm -hmm. You know, making having some big choices, fun. playing. You know, because if you're having fun, the casting directors, the directors, they're gonna have fun watching you. Mm -hmm. And you could have fun in a scene where you're crying, but just because you're you've made your you've done the work, you've done the prep work. You've loaded it up and now it's playtime and you're getting lost. You know, I like to think of acting like, you know, Halloween, you know, you get to put on the wardrobe, you put on the makeup, the hair, you know, and then you can, it's not, it's not even you, it's the character, right? You can, mm -hmm. you can jump around and you can do stuff and be free because it's not you. Mm -hmm. You know, I like to get lost within the character. I mean, yeah. you, you've had some pretty incredible roles. I mean, you know, You've worked with Steven Spielberg on Amazing Stories, you know, uh, your, your, your role on Tales from the Loop, you know, your, your feature films that you've done, you've done some leads and it's some kind of beautiful, what are some, what are some of the other films you've done? Um, I've done a movie called Disappointments Room, I've done a, like a Lifetime movie called Christmas in the City, I've done, I mean, as a very small part in it, but the perfect guy. You've had some serious recurring yeah. roles too. I mean, you yeah, had, a, had some serious recurring roles. In you, you, it. you did, um, what is this show you did? Uh, we worked on it. Um, oh, Lethal Weapon. You had a recurring Oh, yeah, role Lethal Weapon. Mm -hmm. Lethal Weapon. You had, eight, yeah. you had, uh, you won HBO's Camping, Netflix's mm -hmm. uh, Spirit Riding Free, Paramount's Waco. <laughs> I mean, you yeah. played, you played the lead character, David Koresh's son in that, in Waco. Mm -hmm, right? I did. I played a son. Who it was uh, really cool working with Taylor Kish, who played, uh, you know, David Koresh yeah. in Waco. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a really cool guy to hang out with. Um, yeah, I felt like that was a really cool project I was in. I was in Santa Fe for quite a few months, actually. And uh, yeah, it was a really cool experience. Yeah. And they had, I mean, you had some, they had some stunts on there, a lot of shooting mm -hmm. and stuff. I mean, wasn't yeah. that like, you know, that must have been a cool experience for you. It really was, yeah. Yeah. So what's the most fun you've ever had on a set, a movie set or television set? I think the most fun I've had is probably hanging out with Jennifer Garner on camping. I mean, she was a really fun person to be with. She was uh, a goofball and we laughed, played games, and uh, she was a really cool person. Yeah. You know, it's really important to have that atmosphere on a set where it's kind of, you know, fun. You know, if mm -hmm. people are stressed out and they're, you know, in their head and, you know, it's, you know, thinking about, you know, their lines and, the, you know, you, you can't have fun, you know, so mm -hmm. it's really about being prepared. The more prepared you are, the more fun you're going to have. Yep. So you ever get nervous? Uh, I don't actually get nervous that much. Um, 
I think maybe just because I've done it for so long um, that I'm just used to it and I, maybe I'm lucky. That's, that's amazing. You know, even when you walk in a room and in a casting, you never have any nerves. No, I don't really get nervous. Well, well, you've been doing this a long time. You're a pro. (laughs) That's pretty awesome. How do you deal with the disappointment of not getting a role that you, you know, you really wanted? Well, I just tell myself that, sorry, I mean, it was, I did the best that I could and, you know, it was out of my control. Maybe they really liked you and they just chose someone else for different reasons and you just got to get over it. You just got to tell yourself that, sorry, right, maybe I'll get the next one. And, uh, you know, uh, a no from someone is kind of helping you. It helps you. Yeah. Listen, I, I always say every no brings you closer to a yes. Mm-hmm. You want to get a bunch of no's, mm-hmm. you know, that means you're in a game, you know, you're getting auditions, you, you're getting out there and it's not about, you know, getting the part. It's about, you know, booking the room, be, making fans of those casting directors. If they become a fan of your work, they're going to remember you. Mm-hmm. If you come in there and you play a big game every time you get an audition and you really go in there and you have fun they're going to bring you back. Even if you're not right for this role, maybe they went another way. Maybe they went with a name. Maybe they, you know, it's the producer's son. I don't know, but they're going to remember you and Mm -hmm. they're going to keep bringing you back. And if you get a few casting directors that are fans of your work, they're going to, you know, you're going to work because they're going to continue to bring you back in. And if you play a big game, every time you go in the room, you make some big choices, you have fun, you're going to work. So how was it like working with, uh, you did, you work with Pierce Brosnan and Selma Hayek on a film. How, what was that like? Um, I felt like that was a really cool experience. They were really nice people. And uh, we worked on Some Kind of Beautiful together. And I played Pierce Brosnan's son. And my aunt was Selma Hayek. And uh, they were really cool people to hang out with. I was uh, about five or six years old then. And uh, I feel like they were really nice people. Um, something really cool is that, you know, when I was like going in for like, let's say the director's session, uh, actually I went to Pierce's house and they told me that, you know, you already got the part and, you know, Pierce, uh, me, my mom and the director, we all just hang out, ate dinner together. And, uh, Pierce even gave me one of my, one of his electric guitars. So that was wow. pretty cool. That's awesome. So you have yeah, Pierce's nice electric guitar. Have you ever seen him as, as Bond, James Bond? <laughs> yeah, I've seen those movies. Well, that's cool. So, yeah, I know you were directed by Jodie Foster. How was that? Uh, that was really, really cool. Um, I feel like she was a really, really outstanding person to work with. Uh, she was a great child actor, and she really understands all child actors. And I feel like we kind of had a pretty good connection between us. She thought I was very talented, which, you know, it's pretty cool when someone that big of a name and Academy Award winner says that. So that's really cool. I felt I really felt like she was a great person to work with. She's a very talented actor. She's a really amazing director. I mean, you know, I love her work. Her work in Taxi Driver as a young actress is amazing. You know, her and Robert Mm -hmm. De Niro, her performance. If 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 people haven't seen that, you want to see her performance in that. She was pretty amazing. And then uh, she directed, um, was it Little Man Tate? Or I, I believe it was Little Man Tate. So, I mean, she's just super talented. To be able to work with, you know, you're working with A-list actors and directors and producers. I mean, you're living the Hollywood dream. You know, what is it, you know, what is it like to be in, you know, that world, you know, as a working actor, you know, on those I think big it's really, really really cool to be in a situation like that where you've done a lot of acting stuff and you've met a ton of really cool and talented people. I feel like, you know, it kind of makes you happy. Your mom sent me a video of, of uh, them wrapping you on, uh, I believe it was Amazing Stories, mm-hmm. and they were wrapping you and the director was talking about you. And the words he said about you and your, your, your performance and what you brought to the character, they said they needed to find a, a 30 year old in a, in a, a, a little boy. And they said that was impossible. And then they found you and, and you, you know, I mean, I, when I, when I saw that tape, I, I got emotional, you know, I was like, I was so proud of you, 
You know, and you're talking about Steven, you know, being Steven Spielberg and how impressed they were with you. And it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. I mean, just your work with Tales of, from the Loop. I mean, you were in, in contention uh, being submitted for an Emmy nomination. I mean, come on, an Emmy nomination. <laughs> you know, I mean, just being considered for that, you know, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to take your hand, put it out like this, lean forward, and I want you to tap yourself right there on the shoulder. Nice job. I mean, your work was pretty amazing. Thank you. You know, so I, I'm super proud of you. So. Do you have any advice for parents, you know, who, uh, you know, they're thinking about they're getting kids into the business? I feel like you just need to make sure that the kid is really enjoying themselves and having fun. And the kid definitely needs to be the one who's driving all of it. So if you're a parent and, you know, you want your child to be an actor, you, you really got to let them choose their path. Like, it's kind of up to them. That's great advice. Because... You know, there are a lot of parents that push their kids into the business and it's not their dream. It's their parents dream. And, you know, it doesn't work out so well. You got to be mm -hmm. passionate about it. You got to love what you're doing. Yeah. And, 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 I, and I know you're truly passionate about acting and, and you love what you're doing. And that's why you're so good at it, because you, you work at it. You know, so what do parents need to know? You know, what, what do they need to be aware of about the business? I feel like. They need to be aware of that, you know, sometimes their their kid, the actor, is going to be disappointed sometimes, you know, if they wanted some audition that they didn't get, you know, there are going to be a ton of ups and downs, and I feel like, you know, they need to be able to let the kids know that, you know, it's going to be all right, you got to go for the next one, and you know what, like you were saying earlier, every no is closer to a yes, and I feel like, yeah. That's pretty much what they need to be aware of. So what do you like most about being a successful child actor? Um, I really like the craft services. <laughs> um, <laughs> when I was younger, when I was a lot younger, uh, you know, I really loved the craft services. And I'm like, well, I want to get this. Not, I mean, for the acting and all that, but craft services. <laughs> and uh, I mean, still nowadays, I like the craft services, but uh, um. I really just like being there. I like the, you know, traveling to different places and, you know, experiencing all the culture and the food and the really cool sights. And I feel like that kind of, you know, motivates me to, you know, go to cool places and do some cool acting with some cool people. And uh, yeah. It's always an adventure. You never know what's yeah, it's an adventure. That's the, that's the fun thing about being an actor. You never know when what the next audition is going to be. Yeah. Where it's going to lead you and maybe a film mm -hmm. that you got to go to Atlanta or maybe a thing you got to go some you know to a different country you never know mm -hmm. that's the fun part it's the journey it's not it's not a destination it's a journey mm -hmm. you know and you got to be enjoy the ride you know and it's going to be a roller coaster ride it's going to be up it's going to be down yeah you know and you just got to be in it because you're passionate about it and you love it and you're in for the whole ride mm -hmm. and you never give up because there'll be times where you know you may not work for a while, you know, there may mm -hmm. be no auditions that come up, you know, you're going to get to an age sometimes where you're not old enough to play the old roles, but you're too young, young to play, you know, you get it. It's called like the dead zone, mm -hmm. where you, you know, you, you get into that weird age where you can't play old, but you can't play young. So, you know, sometimes it will get quiet for a little while, but mm -hmm. you just got to continue working on your craft and, you know, never give up and keep going after because, you know, those roles will come. The, the, yeah. Those those right roles and they're, and they're coming right now for you. I mean, you know, you've done some beautiful work. What's the most fun you've ever had on a, on a movie set? Um, I think the most fun that I have on movie sets is when I do stunts and you have like a harness and you know, you're like 30 feet off the ground hanging from the ceiling. I think those are always like the most fun parts because so much of acting is mental and it's cool to change it up sometimes and, you know, be physical about it. That's cool. Do you have a stunt person? Um, no, I don't really have a stunt person. I do all, well, all, pretty much all my own stunts. The stunts that I don't do is probably when like I'm, you know, after hours and they have someone else doing shots, okay. but I do pretty much all my stunts. Yeah. Let's say, you know, because of, you know, time restraints, you can, they can only work a young actor a certain amount of hours or whatever. And they, 
they have to get do they have some is like a, an adult like a somebody that a stunt person that you know i, I mean i know there's a, a young female that does a lot of stunts for young actors you know do you have somebody that's, that's doubled you before well you know I, in every production that i've been in they always have like a double for me that does things like that you know if it's just like a hand shot or from the back and i'm going after hours they always have someone like that yeah it's fun you know i mean the fun yeah. part about being an actor is you you get to learn so many things you know mm -hmm. you'll get to learn how to do a stunt you, you know be put in a harness work with some of the best stunt chore choreographers in the business you know playing roles you know i mean as an actor, I've played so many fun roles. You know, I've got to train with the Navy SEALs. I've, I've, you know, did ride alongs with the NYPD, the LAPD, the fire department, the, you know, the Marines, then, I mean, every, every, every military character you could possibly play. I play bad guys. I play good guys. You know, that's, you live so many lives. I mean, you, mm -hmm. you get to live lives and, and, and it's just, they become part of you. All of these characters you play, they become part of you. Mm -hmm. Yep. So how do you prepare for an audition? Well, what I like to do is I like to sit in my room by myself and just look at the scenes a little bit, you know, get the feel of the character. Then I try to get off book by, you know, trying to see the lines in my head. And then I do the scenes in my head. And, you know, then I sleep on it. And it's kind of there in my brain. And then I say it out loud a couple times. Then I say it perform it with my dad and see if he has any thoughts and then I get ready to do the actual audition. Great. And you know, the business has changed a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, because of the pandemic, you know, there's a lot of self tape auditions, a lot less walking into the room, you know, zoom callbacks. How do you feel about self tapes? Well, I was already kind of doing self tapes before the pandemic pandemic. I mean, not as many, but I actually do like the self takes more than, you know, just going in the room because, you know, I can do it on my own clock and when I'm ready to actually perform it. And I feel like that's something that I like to do, you know, be on my own time and do it when I'm ready to actually do it when I feel the character. And uh, though the Zoom auditions with the producers and directors, I mean, I'm not that much of a fan of because it just doesn't feel like, you know, personal. And I like to actually meet with the directors and producers. And I like to, you know, you know, actually meet them in person and not see them on a computer. So, I mean, are you going into auditions now or are you doing everything via Zoom? Or yeah, I'm doing everything on uh, self-tape and Zoom. I haven't had an audition where I go in probably like a year and a half, two years. Yeah, I, I think that's going to be like that for a while. I think, you know, yeah. self tapes are the way to go. That's why I keep telling my all my actors to really, you want to master the self tape. Yeah. You don't want to be the actor with the wrinkle curtain with the sides. <laughs> yeah. it and, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to be that guy. You want to be yeah. the guy that's, you know, having fun, you know, you, yeah, totally. you, know, you got the wardrobe on or the character, it's lit properly. Maybe the background, you know, I don't know if you're being interrogated by the police, but maybe you have a gray background that looks like a, you know, uh, an interrogation room in a police station, you know, I mean, keep it real. You know, you mm -hmm. want to make them feel something, you know, yeah. you really want to, whatever the given circumstances, the, the scene is, is you want to make them feel that, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, with self tapes, it, the cool thing is, is you can shoot it till you get it where you want it. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know? I like that a lot too. And you can give them the performance, you know, mm -hmm. really serve it up and go, this is the performance. And, you know, when you make big choices and you got the wardrobe on and you, I don't know, you decided to give your character an accent and you've loaded it up, you know, if I'm a casting director and I'm looking through tape after tape after tape, act, they're acting, and then boom, there's the, you know, you give me the performance. Mm -hmm. That's the person I'm going to be bringing back in. That's the person that I'm going to be bringing in on a callback and meeting the director. You know, it's all about playing the big game. You know, yeah. out working, out prepping, out everything, those other actors, you know, because those other actors, most of the time, you know, they pick up that script and, you know, they just memorize the lines and they really yeah. don't know who they are. Yeah. They haven't done a little backstory for their character. They haven't, you know, really done the work. And mm -hmm. it's all about the preparation. I love, you know, 
the saying, if you fail to prepare, you've prepared to fail, you know? Yeah. And, and I know you are always prepared, you know, and every time we've worked together, you know, your lines, you're, you know, you're totally off book and, and you're, you're in play mode. Mm -hmm. in, not in your head going what's my next line because when you're in your head you're dead you know when you're in your heart mm -hmm. you're smart when you made some big choices and you loaded it up with your actor toolbox and you're in play mode you know and you leave a piece of you behind in that room or on that tape or in that film mm -hmm. they're going to remember you and you're going to become a working actor mm -hmm. and you know even if you don't get the part they're going to remember you yeah and that casting director is going to become a fan of you and they're going to keep bringing you back in until that right role comes along yeah long as you're in it and you keep giving 150 percent every time you get an opportunity you're gonna work yeah you know and never give up on the dream because there will be times where the roller coaster you know it's it's up and down sometimes you're gonna be down sometimes you, you may get three auditions in a day sometimes you yeah. don't get three auditions in a month mm -hmm. you know so you got to be in it the whole time and mm -hmm. constantly working on your craft you don't want to be the actor that only acts when they have an audition yeah you know, that's the only time they act when they have an audition. No, you want to yeah. be working on your craft all the time. So when you get the audition, you're ready to go. Yeah. So once you book the role, how do you prepare for the role? Well, once again, I mean, I really don't like to over rehearse. I like to be natural and I, it may sound weird, but I like to pretend that I've like never said them before. So it comes off natural. I mean, I read the lines and know what's going on in the scene, but for the most part, I don't like to over rehearse and I kind of want to keep it natural. That's great. And just be in the moment mm -hmm. and listen. I mean, the, the most important thing is listening. Yeah. You know, listening and reacting. And, you know, when you're, you're playing with uh, Jonathan Price or you're, you know, you're acting with, you know, an actor of that caliber, it's, they're giving you, they're feeding you stuff, you know? So all you have to be is they're kind of listening and, and letting them feed you, you know, it's a tennis match. I serve the ball onto your side of the court and you put a spin on it and put it back on my side of the court. And I got to run all the way to the corner and then I hit, hit it over to you. You know, it's that back and forth. So, mm -hmm. you know, when you work with really good actors, it ups your game. Mm -hmm. So what's your vision for the future? What do you see? Well, I mean, my vision for the future is just, you know, keep having fun and keep going. I mean, I'm not hundred percent sure where it's going to go. I don't even think I'm 50% sure. I'm, I'm not even like 1% sure. I just want to keep going, keep working hard and keep doing what I think is right. And, you know, hopefully things will, you know, keep going well and I'll have a bright future, but you know, you never know what's going to happen about acting. Like that's what, that's the thing. Like you don't know what your next audition is going to be. Like you were saying earlier, like you just don't know. So if you, I, I ask this to some of my actors, you know, that are older, I say, if you could go back and give your younger self some advice, what would that be? Well, I think if, you know, I was going to go back and tell myself to, you know, do something different, I'd probably tell myself to, you know, be more natural with what I was doing because I do remember when I was a little younger like I, I kind of just read the lines and stuff like that like which most actors do when they're starting out like I would probably tell myself you know to be more natural with it and you know just act like you're in the moment be the character I'd probably tell myself to do that it's great advice you know uh you know Lucas Till yep you worked with him, didn't you? Yeah, I did. He was a guest. He was a guest yeah. on my podcast. And, uh, you know, I saw that you worked on a project with him. What was that? Did you work with him? Do you have any scenes with him? Uh, I did have a couple scenes with him. Um, most of the, his scenes in the movie were with the, the my mother, Kate Beckinsale. And, uh, yeah, that was in Disappointments Room. I was around, around seven or eight back then. Yeah, I remember him being nice and cool guy. Cool. Yeah, he's a good friend of mine. So listen, I got to thank you so much for doing my podcast and sharing your, your wisdom and your knowledge. Yeah, happy to be here. And uh, I look forward to seeing your, your future. I mean, I, I have no doubt in my mind that you're going to be extremely successful. Thanks. Um, you're super talented and, you know, stay grounded. You know, Hollywood is kind of a tough business, you know, it can, mm -hmm. 
I've seen it chew people up and spit them out. You know, mm -hmm. so you got to stay grounded and, and remember where you come from and remember that you have your mom, guardian angel watching over you. That's really proud of you. You know, I know how proud your mom was of your work, you know, and, and I think you're super talented and I know you got a bright, bright future ahead of you. And I want to thank, thank you. you for being on the podcast. Well, thank you for having me. All right. You take care. I'll talk okay. to you soon. See okay. you. Bye. Bye. Hey, thanks for listening to the show. Please rate, review, share this with your friends. Subscribe if you haven't. Please take whatever you get from here, the golden nuggets, and apply them to your career. Go after your dreams with passion. Don't let anybody tell you it can't be done. I believe in you. Follow your dreams. I'll see you in Hollywood.